Hi, my name is Alexandra and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome back to A Lovely Jaunt where we talk about literature. Today, I am working in collaboration with The Lawn Gnome. He has top 10 lists for each 12 months of the year. And for the month of May, he has asked myself and a whole bunch of other wonderful booktubers to collaborate on the prompt Booktube rec Recommends. So the top 10 books that Booktube has gotten you to read. And this is in honor of BookCon happening this month. But he literally could not have picked a harder prompt for me. You know, this is a part of my personality that I'm trying not to have. Like I'm trying to keep it low key and have a little bit of self-control. I am a super rebellious person. If I sense that people are trying to control, manipulate me, get me to do something like I automatically am like, no. Mm -mm. So all of that to say, this isn't so much a top 10 list as like I scrounged up 10 books that I, of all the books that I could think of that I truly did read because of someone I know through booktube, someone who's a book blogger, bookstagram, or um, just booktube hype in general recommended it to me. I could only think of 10 books. I almost didn't get 10. And that's because I'm a mindlessly rebellious person who does not like to do things that other people do just because the fact that other people are doing them. You know how there are like those life coaches that try to get you to say yes to everything so that you're open to new experiences? I'm like the opposite. I'm trying to get people to say no to more things so that they can spend time, that's my air conditioning, so you spend time on the best things, not on mediocre things including me mediocre books because mediocre books take a lot of time and it's because you're a glorious beautiful soul and you deserve the best that's what i think okay so as a result this list is going to run the gamut from negative three billion stars to truly some of the best books that i've ever read in my life and i just want to throw another caveat in here but first i want to start with a story just yesterday i was watching some booktube and i watched a booktuber do an unboxing and we all know that this is sponsored content she has a really big channel and the reason why she gets the box for free is and then gushes about it in videos because it's a really good sales technique and the rest of us buy the boxes on the basis of her recommendation and her enjoyment of it. But honestly, she got so genuinely excited about the book that was included and the product she caught. And I mean, like, I could not care less about the books. I'm never going to read them. Zero interest, zero interest in the tote, zero interest in the candle. Uh, and, and the packaging, like the zigzaggy crinkle paper, like I don't care how it was packaged. But her joy, her joy was so pure and so sweet and it was honestly such a fun video to watch. And so while I have equal passion for the things that I love, and I hope that that comes across in the videos that I create on this channel, I also have equal passion for the things that I loathe entirely. And there's a couple of things that I'm concerned my negative opinions will do. I'm very thoughtful about the content that I put out. One is that I don't want my dislike of a book to discourage someone from beginning their reading journey. I know that I started off reading books that today I'm a stronger and better reader and I wouldn't really enjoy those in the same way that I did when I was younger and when I was starting to read. And I don't want my negative opinion to discourage someone. Some books that are really beloved on booktube are really fun garbage. They're kind of like the junk food of books. And I still read and eat junk food, honestly, I really do. I read a ton of YA that you guys probably don't even know about because I don't spend a lot of time talking about it on my channel, but it's not my entire diet. And so what I wanna be on this channel is part of that journey of your growth as a reader. That's why I started my series from YA to classics. And I really wanna be about us leveling up our reading. That's why my tagline is read better, not more. But the first step is discovering that joy of reading in the first place. And I don't care where that happened or book, what book that started with or where you are on that journey right now. So I hope that my negative opinion some of which you're gonna hear today don't discourage you and the second thing is that because I already talk about classics almost exclusively on my channel I don't want negative opinions about books that are perhaps not as intellectual or sophisticated or whatever to be misconstrued for snobbery I um, I don't read classics because of some social imperative that real readers should read them, uh, otherwise you're not a reader, but because I truly love them. And I don't talk about a lot of classics on my channel because I don't love those books. So I don't want like 
my one-two punch of like classic literature and then also negative opinions about really popular books to make me look like a snob. I guess it's a vanity question. I don't want you guys to misconstrue me as a snob. That's truly not the place that I'm coming with. Okay, okay, enough with the justifications. We're gonna do the list now. Gosh, long-winded. Rolling in, number 10, A Court of Thorns and Roses. So it's at the bottom of my list. Akatar. Oh, Akatar. Um, this book is super popular on everywhere. Booktube, book Twitter, Bookstagram. I actually really love fantasy. I love fey fantasy. I love high fey fantasy. I was ready to pick up this book, have a fast-paced, entertaining page turner with a little bit of romance sprinkled in. Woohoo! Have a fun little book to read. I was not a fan. I DNF'd it right around the scene where the male lead justifies his physical abuse of the main character because it's part of his lust driven spring ceremony and it's not his fault and he couldn't help himself but it was her fault because he told her not to be there but she went there yeah yeah that's what i thought negative a million stars so this is not to say that you can't or shouldn't read it for the entertainment value or you can't like it you totally can like i said earlier for me this falls into the category potentially of really fun garbage and i think it's about knowing what you're consuming when you're consuming a hot pile of garbage like be honest with yourself i alexandra sometimes like to consume a steaming hot pile of garbage because sometimes that's fun it's okay to eat a twinkie once a month it's not okay to be exclusively on a diet of hostess baked goods and doritos and also don't try to convince me that the twinkie i'm eating right now is broccoli in short i found this book had many of the same fundamental flaws of twilight and there are a couple of people on booktube who are making lots of critical content about it but there were far more gushing about it without acknowledging its flaws and i found that disappointing um i would love to see our community be a little bit more balanced i don't think it's about canceling this book or canceling this author or whatever or her twitter um, it's all about being enlightened readers in my opinion so just recognize it for what it is and I'm not trying to convince myself again that this Twinkie that I'm eating is broccoli it's not and in fact when I approach a book that way it allows me it can actually be useful for me like I can recognize oh this is how a mindset of say victim blaming might be understood from the person who has that perspective and, and maybe we can understand how they got to that worldview maybe we can enter into a fruitful conversation about that issue with people who may have unconsciously adopted a viewpoint that we disagree with so I think that there are really useful ways to approach a book like a book doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be perfectly moral it doesn't have to be per perfectly represented for it to be worthy of my time. It's more about just being a conscious reader when I'm reading and when I do reviews or when I reflect on the book that we recognize some of these flaws as we work through it. Number nine, I know how to count. I started off with seven. Did you see that? Because that maths. Okay, Ready Player One, number nine. I also really like sci-fi, and this book was actually really popular with some of my programmer friends, like offline and off booktube. And when the film came on the scene, I saw my a few booktubers making content about of it, about it with a lot of mixed reviews. I highly recommend uh, My Name Is Marie Nez's review of this book. I'm going to link it down below. She has a very good criticism of the book. But in addition to the many concepts that she discusses, there's another reason I hated this book, and hate. Is a strong word but it is accurate this is probably hands down hands down put your hands down one of the worst books i've ever read purely in terms of craft that is simply in terms of his writing if i were a creative writing teacher this book would be endlessly useful to me as an exemplar of what not to do as a as a writer if you want to write something good if you really want to suck you know you can but also if you want to write a wildly successful book that sells millions of copies and gets picked up by Spielberg to be made into a movie, maybe emulate him. What do I know? But literally it was, it was the worst. It was the worst. Negative three billion stars. This is why I can't do stars, you guys. Like there aren't enough negative stars to reflect the nuance of the books that I dislike. <laughs> Rolling in at number eight. I got the number correct this time, is Divergent. I remember speeding through this book. Super fast, plot-driven read. It really struggled, struggled with second book slump, and I don't think I got the past the first chapter before DNFing the second book in the series. Two points. One about the second book. So I hate, I hate when the main character is being an idiot and knows it. So it's a 
first person narrative so we hear her thoughts right and so, like this second book basically starts off with like i knew i was being wildly dangerous and like out of control and threatening the relationship that i worked so hard to develop in the first book but i'm doing it anyway for no compelling reason because the author couldn't think of one and doesn't know how to make real conflict that's not how teenagers are like you can't just be like oh like they're being irrational it's a teenage brain or whatever it's like no even if you're emotionally immature or, or you're younger or whatever, you're doing things for motivation. You're doing things with impulses behind it, even if they are immature reasons. Um, so teenagers don't have like magic eight balls for brains where they're like, what should I do next? You know, and the magic. Anyway, that was a weird metaphor. So that was why I DNF that book early on. And it's frustrating to read a character like that. Like, no, you have to, you have to give your characters motivations. Who knew? <laughs> Thought that one was obvious. But I think it also faced like a fundamental structural flaw with its five houses that it has. So I think there was like a blurring of the lines between the erudite and the abnegation and also between the erudite and the candor. And then of course she gets six in there with the divergent group. And in doing so, this book attempts to defy basically the Jungian concept of four major categories. This is why there's four houses in Harry Potter. This is why there's four companions in The Wizard of Oz. And I think it's really hard hard to have clear boundaries between these groups when you have more than four. So in the end, I did not enjoy reading this book more than I regretted spending time with it, aka it was a waste of time, uh, zero stars. So not like negative a million stars, not that bad, it's just zero, that's all. I wish you could do zero stars on Goodreads, that's a fundamental flaw. I wish I could do negative three billion stars on Goodreads so people could know. <laughs> Um, but I'd take just zero because a lot of books would have zero stars for me. Number seven, I'm currently in the middle of Cinder and I'm going to DNF it. It's boring. It's boring. I've read it before. I'm burnt out on why I think because I've read so much. I'm kind of a fast reader and I've been reading a lot. But like I kid you not, I've, I've probably DNF'd over a hundred books this year and it's May. It's May. I've also probably read like 50 or 60 books so far this year. So I'm proud of that. It's gonna take something really good to make me put in the time at this stage in my life. I'm getting old late, you guys. Can you tell I'm like a curmudgeon? I need, I need excellent things. I need beautiful things. I wanna read those things. I don't wanna waste my time. Number six, Uprooted. Um, this book got a lot of attention on booktube. Um, Peru's project is probably the person who really pushed me over the edge. She talks about it a lot. I really enjoy her channel. And if any of you watch her videos, you know that this book comes up a lot on a lot of her lists about fantasy books that she likes. So it's fairy tale esque. It's not really a fairy tale retelling, but it has that vibe. It has that feeling, which I love. I love mythology and fairy tales. I've probably referenced that too frequently, but this book was fine. It's like right on the cusp, like it might be a waste of time. Somewhere between zero and one star. It's a decimal star, a fraction of a star. Um, number five, Hazelwood. I should read more middle grade because I thoroughly enjoyed this book. One of my favorite questions in literature is the ontological question. That is what makes a person a person? What makes up a person? What is a person made up of? And oftentimes a subsequent question is where does our free will fit in with that ontology? So not only is this a fun book to read, again, fairy tale vibes all over the place, lovely prose, great pacing, characters that you want to root for, and a really creative concept. But like I said, it de dealt with a philosophical question question that's one of my favorites. Three stars. That's a really high rating for me, by the way, in case you haven't noticed so far. <laughs> um, number four, Circe. This is the second of two books push pushed into my hands by Cat Fairy Reads, who primarily blogs about books. So you can watch my more in-depth uh, review here, my video about it. In short, I really love this book. It has earned a spot on my TBRR list, uh, which is to be reread, and the highly coveted check out everything else by this author list, four stars. I gave it four stars in my brain, like right now. I don't, I don't put stars on Goodreads, so I'm on there, but I'm really inactive. Number three, Scythe. Um, I don't know who ultimately convinced me to read this book. That's my dog whining in the background. He really, really wants to be friends with the dog that just walked by. But I'm so glad that I did. This book also deals with another question that I really enjoy. You may think that this book is about how to decide who gets to live and die. It's not actually about that. 
it's a little bit about that but that's not like what it's really really about what it is actually about and what the whole genre of both dystopian and utopian fiction is sort of concerned with is how do you create and maintain a society so if you think about it like historically most society kind of just naturally happens so if you have like a tribal leader maybe one person comes to the fore becomes a king maybe it conquers a couple people and you know you basically start building a country and maybe an empire and that sort of thing if you like become sophisticated enough and are good at killing people whereas like America we have a very unique history in that our society was kind of constructed and so these dystopian and utopian genres are dealing with the question of political philosophy basically of how to construct and maintain a society and I think we all recognize that chaos of society that has the freedom to just happen also gives sort of rampant opportunity for suffering and cruelty and so there's always this wager and this bargain going on which is like are we willing to give up our freedom in order for the reduction or hopefully complete elimination of suffering you know at what point does that become worthwhile and how do we balance those scales and this novel explores this bargain beautifully very very interesting stuff three stars you can't even tell because my hand is off out of view. Three. All right, number two. Ethan Frome, a Bear and a Bee Books, specifically requested that I read and analyze this book on my channel. It was honestly not on my radar at all. I knew who Edith Wharton was for House of Mirth and The Age of Innocence, neither of which I've read, but were kind of like on my list, on my back burner, and I had never, never heard of Ethan Frome before. Um, I'm so glad she made this request. I love this novella. I have a whole playlist of videos analyzing this book, including an application of one of my favorite concepts, the Unheimlich from Freudian psychology. I don't speak German. I have no idea if that's how it's pronounced, but that's how I think it should be. Fascinating stuff, guys. Three stars. Number one, Love in the Time of Cholera. This was the first book that Cat Fairy Reads recommended to me, and I think this is kind of like the difference between like an individual who kind of gets to know you and says like, hey, here's a book that I think you specifically would like versus just following hype or popularity kind of in the community in general. I'm actually really, really hard to recommend books for. And that Cat Fairy Reads is two for two. Kind of tells me she might be an, in an intuitive person. This book is obviously widely acclaimed, award-winning, very famous. And, and I, has it been made into a movie as well? possibly. And while I have had vague notions of like dipping my toe into magical realism and reading Gabriel, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, it, it really was Cat Fairy Reads who pushed it into my hands. And I'm so glad she did. It is one of the best all-time books I have ever read in my life ever. 10 out of 10. Thank you. Goes on my TBRR shelf. The author gets on my top 10 list. I need to pick up other books by him. Amazing. 1 million stars. So a big thank you to Lawn Gnome, I don't know why I'm clapping so much in this video, I feel like I shouldn't do that right by my mic, um, for including me in this col collaboration. It was fun to recall what books I had read and who recommended them and ultimately what I thought about them. I hope you enjoyed also my brief overview of some of these. If you want more in-depth analysis on them, uh, leave a comment below, upvote other people's choices. Until next time, I'm Alexandra and I'm still a bibliophile. <laughs>